Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So actually revisiting a little bit of an old video topic and that is kind of what are the best starting units for newer players. Or maybe you've been playing for a while and kind of want to get some of the top meta units at the moment. I kind of wanted to put together a little bit of a list of my kind of five top units. I did this probably about four, maybe five months ago now, uh, back in summer 2020. And I just feel like the game moves on so quickly that many of the units that were really key in that video kind of have changed and aren't the same now. So, hence, kind of I thought it was well worth revisiting them. Um, obviously, one of the hardest things I think about putting the list together is not just putting all seasonal units. I think the game becomes very season dependent, you know, call it power creep, call it what you want. Um, I think the seasonal units tend to end up being very, very good. And so they're kind of the ones that you're going to end up wanting to use. But obviously, as newer players, they're quite hard to unlock, particularly some of the older challenges. You know, there's an awful lot of grinding to do before you can get them reasonably unlocked. And in the meantime, you're also going to have a lot of spare honour. So I'm kind of conscious that I wanted to kind of include a little bit of a mix of some seasonal, but also some honour-based units that you can kind of be working towards. So I'm going to start off with an old classic, it's in every single one of these videos I ever do, and it's still just as good as it was at the start, Pike Militia. Uh, these guys here, they, they really are just one of the best low tier units you can lay your hands on. They only cost 110 leadership, the unit that you, you will basically start with, or the honour unlock cost is so low as to be negligible, and they are just a great unit, they're a great end tier unit. Now arguably people will say Domain Pikes are also really good, and... I think they are, but for me, Pipe Militia is just that bit better, and it's the one I enjoy the most. Veterancy line-wise, there's one, only one viable way to go, and that's right down the middle. Uh, it's all irrelevant, basically, because you, you get the um, double strikes, and you get the stun, bracing stuns enemy units. Even though these units don't necessarily hit that hard, the fact that they stun enemies, it makes it hard for enemy infantry to push into the face of Pipe Militia, because they're getting continuously stunned as they hit into them. And then that damage rapidly racks up. They also have this really little dense column formation. So Pike Militia are really just played you just pushing them into the enemy block and bracing right in their face. If you've got allied units with you, all the better. But these guys are really effective. And for only 110 leadership, they're one of those units that I still slot into my warband builds now. Because, you know, there's not a lot else at this sort of level of leadership, which is actually a viable unit. So, yeah, 100%. Get your pipe militia, get them leveled up. They are really an important unit. So to move on to these guys, I'm going to move on to a seasonal unit. Uh, actually, two seasonal units. I've decided to clump them together as one listing because they sort of work together. And that is the Stalwarts and the Paladins. Um, I don't want to do too many seasonal units, but these two have really, at least recently, found their place as sort of real key units. If you've managed to level yourself sort of above level 60 by this point and been thrown into sort of some of the, the full scale matchmaking, you'll have realised that almost everyone seems to bring stalwarts with them into battle. And there is a reason for that, and that reason is that they are a really good unit and they are really, really hard to counter. Not only are they really tanky in terms of their base stats, you know, with almost nine, well, almost a thousand on the piercing defence, but they are also really damaging. They have a very, very intense block, which basically makes them invulnerable from the front, and means you can only really kill them by flanking. They're kind of the ultimate shield unit. They block range well. They, they really replace um, Imperial shield guards, uh, but also do damage, and that's what makes them such an effective unit. Um, so they're kind of a must unlock. And the same really applies for the Paladins. These, for me, are probably my favourite unit in the game at the moment. They're perhaps a little harder to use well, but they are a really good all-round sword unit. If you have quite an aggressive playstyle like me, I really enjoy just pushing them with these guys. They do really well. They have an attacking block, so that means that while they stab, they're also blocking, so it's very hard for enemy units to sort of hit back and damage them. They have an amazing charge. They also get a self-heal. As you can see, I've thrown sort of all the best doctrines I can get my hands on at these guys because I really enjoy them so much. Two units that are really, really good to get unlocked. Interestingly to note, from the actual unit challenges, uh, you don't need to unlock because these are promoted units, so they're an upgraded version of an existing tech tree unit. You do not need 
to unlock with honor the spear sergeants first because the first challenge you will complete in the in the um the unit challenges from the season five is uh actually want to give you the spear sergeants for free you do not need to get the spear sergeants unlocked or the paladins and finally any um unit tree upgrades you do i can find the column here in both the spear sergeants and the men at arms does affect the stalwarts and the paladins as well so these do carry over so moving on from them let's go back to a tech tree unit it's got to be the imperial pike guard so these guys here really have become kind of a unique unit in the way that they play and it's kind of become essential as a counter to cavalry if we go and find them in the barracks chat if you see where they are there they are they are the only unit that has an advanced ability so if we have a look at it here and it's basically where they lower their pikes and very slowly walk forwards in, in a line basically but any cavalry that runs into that pretty much gets instantly stopped by the advance and well, well frankly will die quite quickly and it's the only unit that really effectively or will instantly stop a cavalry charge it's also very effective against infantry if you can get them to push over and it just becomes because of the mechanic of the advance it becomes an essential unit the brace is really uh, pretty terrible in my opinion then not all that great but it's the advance that this unit is really all about okay they have some defensive stats almost 10,000 health what 650 on the piercing defense it's not really enough to make them a particularly good pike unit you know honestly i'd probably pick pike militia for their bracing over these guys but it's the advance that really makes them it is worth noting that the advance won't go through um, a braced shield unit like a stalwarts it won't push through them it won't push through um, imperial shield guard so you have to be a little bit careful about how you use them but in terms of their ability to stop golden era t5 top tier cav they are absolutely second to none so they really are kind of for that reason alone uh, a key unit to me and also a really key unit in territory war so back to some of the seasonal units and we're going to go way back to the start way back to season two for a real classic unit that has just never been knocked off the top spot and that is of course namcan archers um they're just pretty undoubtedly the best archers in the game for their tier really aren't very expensive leadership wise well expensive ish but compared to other units and they come with 32 models they just perform outstandingly because of their bleed damage so they can stack really high amounts of bleed damage combine that with the fact they actually have a really good base penetration and damage means that their base hit is actually pretty nice and then when you can combine that with bleed damage they can stack up to like two and a half thousand damage a second just means it is brutal both against enemy heroes and enemy units they are just the archer unit to have and i think if you've watched any of my other reviews on any other archer unit i almost always compare them to namcans because namcans are just like the calibration point for archers in this game is it better or worse than a namcan and pretty much always the answer is worse because namcans just it's just such a really solid archer unit you can't really go wrong with so yeah certainly recommend these guys as one you're going to be able to unlock and at the moment some of the earlier season two challenges are um a little bit easier to unlock you would actually actually have to do that many of them at the moment i think you only have to finish six to actually get these uh challenges unlocked so should as a new player be some fairly easy ones to get unlocked early and because they're only a three star unit there's actually not even that much grinding to get them fully leveled up they're only got to go up to level 16 so not even too bad to actually get up to the correct level and finally we are going to stick with the seasonal units kind of a tough one to decide what to do i think at one point you know you want to put a cavalry in this video as a, as a unit to pick and at one point i would have probably recommended keshigs and so but with obviously some of the nurse that have happened to them they're still a very effective unit but they're not quite the crazy dominant unit they once were and obviously this is a bit of an aspirational target these are very hard to unlock perhaps a little bit easier now some of the seasonal two challenges are easy but there's still an awful lot of challenges to do to get these guys unlocked it's a pretty tough challenge and that really leaves two viable options in my opinion well maybe three maybe three viable options one is monastics they're quite an easy unit to get to from an honor point of view yes they are a gold near a unit it's going to seem a long way off but actually getting past these two isn't that bad particularly if you're going to unlock them um with the yeah, unit challenges first then the actual honor requirement to unlock these monastics not too bad the other option is winter czars 
probably one of the more, if not the most dominant cav in the game at the moment. But there is an awful lot of honour to actually get down this tech tree, to get through the Cortiliers, down through the Yeoman, through the necessary upgrades, to actually get and unlock the Winged Hazars. Makes it a pretty hard one to realistically say this is one you should be aiming for as a new player. But again, on this page, Winged Hazars are currently the one you're going to be wanting to go for. And the final option, which I think might seem a little bit odd to some people, is the Armagel Lancers. Kind of an interesting unit. They are probably the only viable non-tier 5 cav, really. Maybe prefetch a heavy cavalry. Sometimes Iron, Ca Iron Scout caps can be good. But realistically, they're a nice unit, these Armaga Lancers. We're seeing them quite a lot in games at the moment. They have really good movement speed. They're an effective unit that's fast. They hit hard. They have a nice charge. They also have a cover commander, which kind of makes them a fairly easy unit to use for newer players as well. And obviously, considering we're right in the middle of Season 6 at the moment, the one that you could grind for, perhaps without too much trouble, and still be kind of on the current season trend. So, hopefully, that has at least given you some idea, a little bit about what the units you might want to be sort of trying to head towards as a new player. I know I've probably picked some units there that might seem quite a long way away, particularly some of the seasonal ones are quite hard to unlock, particularly things like, you know, the Paladins, you actually have to get through some other units first, like the Stalwarts to actually get to them, and that can make it seem like a pretty daunting challenge. But you don't actually have to play that much to really start to make decent inroads into some of these challenges, and some of the units I've outlined, like the Imperial Pike Guard, the uh, Pike Militia, are two units that you can really get to fairly easily. Namcad Archers should be a unit that you can get to fairly easily, and these are all key units that you're going to be using pretty much forever, even if you play this game for months to come, these are going to be key units that you're always going to come back to, so it's worth putting in the time to grind them out now. But anyway, hopefully you found the video useful, if you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and of course subscribe to the channel for lots more Conquered Blade content. Thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.